Premiere Max. Is this the best title screen a dark and twisted comic book adaptation could come up with? Where's the blood or the flames or a f***ing crow? This looks like someone suggested Courier knew at the title screen meeting and everyone else was lacking on font knowledge. 90s fire effects. They look like fire, but they look way more like effect. It's like they programmed the computer by saying, we need something orange, black, white, and billowy. And the computer thought about it for a minute and said, why do people war? People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Only five people, though. Also, crowation. But sometimes, something so bad happens that a terrible sadness is carried with it, and the soul can't rest. And there will be no more Fantasia. Then sometimes, just sometimes, the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. Even if sometimes souls were so sad that they were brought back to kick ass, there would be so many of the crows running around that you'd think twice about killing someone in a really super sad way. By the way, this process seems really subjective. Who the f gets married on Halloween anyhow? Crime scene cop humor. Also, seriously, Shelly isn't even dead yet. She's on the floor getting medical attention, and this cop feels fine being judgy about their wedding date. Is this the victim? No, it's Amelia Earhart. Oh, come on, Albrecht. We all know Amelia Earhart wasn't discovered until the 24th century by Captain Janeway, where she was found cryogenically frozen by an alien race. Amateurs. Jesus, Albrecht. I can see why they took away your gold oh, yeah. sheet. Yeah, I wasn't a big enough asshole. Beat cop and detective being dicks to each other because movie cliche. This situation was extremely sad. Like, have the crow bring Eric Draven's soul back to make things right sad. But it went through judicial review for one year before they stamped the approval. Judge William Death Crowford, who was normally very bearish on these things, delivered the deciding vote. Also, let's just state the obvious. Draven? Really? Are we even trying? Rejected names include Jack Escrow, Isaiah Crowell, and Raven Simone. A building gets torched. All that is left is ashes. I used to think that was true about everything. Families, friends... Feelings. You used to think feelings turned to ashes? Two people who are meant to be together. Nothing can keep them apart. Except killing them. Man, for something that's supposedly supernatural. They make this poor bird work his f***ing beak off to summon a soul. It's about this time that the crow is like, Jesus, couldn't we have figured this out before the funeral? Mickey, come on, man. You, you gotta put the mustard underneath first. Hey, 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 come on. Let me do it. Unless he's making you a new hot dog, that it's already been done. Apparently, before any destruction can take place, these henchmen need to get the signal. It's like, hold on boys, we might not want to destroy all these arcade machines before we blow it up. But if I bring up my Lake Erie on Fire story, that really sets the mood. You're telling me his body hasn't decomposed one f***ing bit in a year's time, and he's still got his rock star hair? Yes, the crow's magic includes keeping the avenging zombie good looking. Oh man, could they not have sent anything else that could have told him why he was brought back to life? Why did they assign crows for this job? Why didn't the powers that be hire Max von Zito? Say, we showed that arcade, boys, now let's scrap! Dumpster boots. Sure would have been nice if death had tied a message to this crow's feet. Hey Eric, welcome to the wonderful world of revenge. We sell three tiers of revenge packages. You want to kill Dave from the third grade? You can kill Dave from the third grade. Man, someone really misspelled tiramisu on this sign. Eric walks down some extremely filthy steps. Not so much because of all the trash, but Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger just had sex there about five minutes ago. Still? It wasn't until Die Hard came out six years earlier that falling effects got a lot better than this. Eric paints his face like the Joker while listening to The Cure's Burn. And I'm pretty sure this scene just birthed the emo movement. Gerard Way was born in 1977, but his birth certificate says 1994. Also, thank God all this black and white makeup was still around along with this leather jacket. It's as if he was stocking up for the day he would have to be resurrected and become a gothic superhero. I'm wondering what would have happened if the apartment had been cleaned up since his death and got new tenants. Would he have to break into a moral Norman? Pause so the three people who knew who the f*** this character was in 1994 could clap. It's always great to have a crow as your pace car when you're doing some post-death kick-ass training on some rooftops. This is what we'll see Adonis do in Creed 3. Rocky will be like, yo, Donnie, I saw this movie from 1994. I think I'll get you in shape real good. I get that the crow leads Eric to the people responsible for his and his fiance's deaths. But why does it start at the bottom of the bad guy ladder? Why not start with T-Bird, since he was clearly the ringleader in this whole shebang? <laughs> Movie spares no expense at showing you the crow any chance it gets. I would do a bonus round of all the cutaways, but we'd all die a super sad death, and that would bring more crows. Why don't you tell me a story? A man and a woman in law. Holy sh Eric not only wants to kill this guy, but he wants to bore him to death too. I love her eyes. Pretty. Great performance and all, but I also feel like this might be just a Tuesday night for Bai Ling. Suddenly, I heard a tapping. 
as of someone gently rapping. Jesus, what a pretentious f**k. Quotes Edgar Allan Poe before killing a dude? Plus, despite there being no real distinction between crows and ravens, this is from The Raven. And I bet John Cusack loses a bit of his soul every time he hears this. Do you really want to do that to John Cusack? Look what you did to John Cusack! Oh no, the ring is going to trigger one of those MTV edited style flashbacks. Every time Eric has a flashback, I black out and lose time. Why is a jaguar carcass in my living room? Now you're gonna tell me where to find the rest of Tim Tim's little party pal. But isn't the crow Eric's GPS for the evening? Why does he need Miller's Crossing here to tell him Is that gasoline I smell? Yeah, because that's how gasoline works. Look at me expecting realism from a movie where a guy comes back to life because of some sort of crow statute. Oh well. Gideon survives this. Listen to white, you move, you're dead. And I say I'm dead, and I move. Oh, there, champ. Just because you're dead and seeking revenge against the gang that killed you and your fiance does not give you a dick license. Get away from there! Eric, who has no verifiable powers other than maybe being immortal, somehow completely disappears in like one second. I guess it's all those wind sprints paying off. If you need proof that this movie was made by people snorting eyeballs and cocaine, look no further. They f***ing wrote it into the script. Somebody stuck his blades in all his major organs in alphabetical order. I get it. Tintin had a bunch of knives stuck in him. It's just a colorful expression. But how many organs is this? The heart, the lungs? and maybe the stomach? When I'm doing a check of inventory, I find this stabbing to be light several organs. Alphabetical checks out, though. Hey! hey, good thing Eric was there to save Sarah from being hit by a car that is easily seen by even the dumbest four-year-old before they walk into traffic. This girl's supposed to be street smart, right? But maybe not in the literal sense? I wish the rain would stop just once. So do I, Sarah, but this is kind of the norm for 90s thrillers. You know, the last time you went snooping around on a case is when you got put back on the beat. But he was a detective. Isn't snooping around on a case in the description of his f***ing job? They never really explain what line he crossed. Oh well. You're gonna wind up working a school crosswalk. That's crosswalkist. Even with it being the title of the film, there's still at least 67% more crow flying in this movie than is needed. We haven't quite reached the 40 minute mark of this movie, but I swear I've heard the entire soundtrack by now. Each scene seems to open with yet another song. I bought the soundtrack already, guys. Your subliminal advertisement will not but already worked on me. I guess these bad guys went to the secret life of pet school of leaving your windows open in a big city. Did George R.R. R. Martin watch this and come up with Game of Thrones? The book was published in 1996. Now wait, this movie came out in 1994. He would never have finished a book that fast. Morphine is bad for you. Does he really have the power to drain morphine from someone who already took it? It's not even mixed with the blood. Next thing we're gonna see is the crow flying around the world to reverse time. Handyman might need to do some cardio. Took him way too long to get up a flight of stairs if Eric had time to drag Fun Boy from the bathtub and inject him with six needles and paint the bloody crow on him. Yeah, but aren't you at the bad guy's lair? Why stop now? Is it for the movie's runtime? Freeze! Don't ever do that, man. And what exactly did he do? The window's in front of Albrecht, but Eric showed up behind him. What exactly are the extent of the crow's powers? Is he a ghost or a zombie? Can he disappear or teleport? Or will the movie explain any of this sh Ah, uh, are you some kind of a ghost? Look, man, you've been with the Ghostbusters for 10 years now. Come on, you're better than this. Did he take makeup with him from his apartment and is now performing touch-ups as needed? Because with his running around and being in all those fights, there is zero chance the makeup job is still that presentable. Also, how does Eric know what memory he's going to get when he touches someone's head? It's been a year. He could just as easily have witnessed one of Albrecht's lap dances at Dreamgirls. I kept asking questions and... Finally got busted for sticking my nose where it wasn't wanted. But Albrecht had already been demoted to beat cop prior to Eric and Shelley's murders. If the movie can't keep up with its own timeline, I sure as f shouldn't be expected to. You shouldn't smoke these. They'll kill you. This movie is so breachy, I'm half expecting Nancy Reagan, Mr. T, and Soleil Moon Fry to show up after the credits. She's supposed to be your sister? My father's daughter. It's not enough for these two lovers to kill people during threesomes or snort eyeball cocaine. They also have to be brother and sister, or else they aren't evil enough. I ain't making all this up. I ain't twisted like you two. This hostile, aggravated tone, even in the face of death, is so standard for this actor, it should just be called the John Polito. <laughs> Eric plays his guitar super loud on top of a rooftop at like 2 in the morning, and he's officially in the unlikable zone. I bet this crow is like, God damn it, everywhere I go I hear Eric shitty music. You again. You lost or hungry? Who says that to a bird landing on your windowsill? How does she even know it's the same bird? I'm your passenger. This is the only line remaining from the original script, when it was a biopic about Iggy Pop. There's never anybody else in this town, aside from the main characters, except when people try to cross the street. Stupid ass hair! Stupid ass hair. Looking past the idea that Skank could even get the jump on this guy who is twice his size, he just got hit by a fucking car. How is he even standing? Between this bit and Skank getting hit by the car a few seconds ago, this movie has taken a strong left turn into Adam Sandler territory. And I don't like it. If the cop car is really that close, it should have run Eric and T-Bird off the road by now. Where the f*** is Skank even going? Wasn't he just following them? He appears to be currently on his own demolition derby. Everybody survives this. Cool shot and all, but nope. 
Also, damn, how did he have enough gasoline left for this? He used nearly all of it doing the Die Hard 2 gas trail lighter trick. Did this symbol have to be giant? And he nearly f***ed this up by not moving these crates and out of the way when drawing the wing on the right. Seriously, there's a groundskeeper or some right? Did this not get reported? Is this run by the same guy who ran the Forest Green Cemetery and Jason lives? So, I don't mean to be that kind of dick. Okay, fine, I am that kind of dick. But the news is reporting on Devil's Night, as in a night for the devil to do evil things. While the beginning of the movie told us it was Devil's Night, as in a night for multiple devils to do evil things, like Ladies' Night for Devils. That apostrophe bothers me more than anything in this whole movie, actually. I have a feeling this newscast pulls out the same Detroit this time last year footage every year. Like, this footage is from 1980, but like those Cadbury cream egg commercials with the bunny balking like a chicken, they're evergreen. Good speech, though. All right, smartass. There's not enough villains and anger issues present in this film. So glad we've got these dick measuring contests from Albrecht and Torres every 20 minutes or so. I swear to God, the only reason that Eric is burning these photos right now is because the movie wants to give us more very red flashbacks. I thought you were dead. As she should have been, or at the very least, dirty. Ending on this makes me feel like this entire sequence was just to get a good overhead shot out of buys links. So we throw a little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. What exactly does this criminal organization do? They start fires, then profit? How does that work? Do they sell insurance? Drywall? Also, since this whole fire thing is an issue that's been going on for at least a couple years, do the cops seriously not have any safeguards in place? Just one shot of top dollar paying some cops off would make this at least 10% more believable. You're him, huh? The Avenger. Really feels more like a Joker ripoff than one of the Avengers, but semantics. I see a lot of shooting going on, but is anyone dying? Oh, Jesus, these edits. You're all going to die. It's clear to these guys that he can't be killed with guns, right? He just took a hundred bullets and still got up a minute ago. Yet this guy keeps on firing, hoping for the best. Oh, come on. You guys call yourselves real my life with the Thrill Kill Cult fans? Well, it's official. The Crow has two terrible falling scenes, beating the record of one previously held by many other movies, but mainly Rear Window. I don't know if someone's gonna find some Lorenzo Lamas thriller from 1988 and prove me wrong, but according to me, The Crow has the record now. Good to know there are actual cops in this city. It looked like Ernie Hudson versus all of Detroit through most of this movie. Gotta be honest, guys, I don't even know why Eric is running here. It's not like bullets can hurt him. In a lot of movies where people are invincible, you understand they don't want to get shot because at least it causes them pain. Here, I don't think it does. Plus, he's got the ability to disappear. But I guess that only works when someone turns their head slightly for a second. Ha! Roof jumping action. So many cops think they're giving away donuts. Cops and donuts, a hilarious combination that's been working for movie jokes since 1689. Don't do the math, it's true. The crow is his link between the land of the living and the realm of the dead. By Ling's position. Also, it's hilarious you somehow know that, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, if this is true, the supernatural order of the Crow Resurrections need to correct this fatal flaw in their Avenging Angel scheme. I'm starting to think they should have just released this last summer and retitled it The First Purge instead of the movie we got with that title. Also, okay, so this is October 30th, right? It's not Halloween, so these kids are running around the city trick-or-treating on the wrong day during a notorious night for crime. Although, honestly, who really knows how much time has passed since Eric rose from his grave? Feels like three days, but earlier Top Dollar was telling his crew to set the biggest fire the city's ever seen explicitly for Devil's Night. Maybe Eric didn't wake up one year later, but nearly a year later. I guess he could have woken up at midnight exactly on October 30th, and it's been such a long day it feels like more. I don't know. It. How did they know they'd be at the cemetery? Wouldn't it make more sense for him to be at his old apartment? Along with everything else, I guess he also has the power of not getting wet in a downpour. Bye bye, Bernie. Ernie Hudson X mocking us the crap out of this scene, and I can't even figure out how he knew it'd be here. Incest. <laughs> Every time Bai Ling's bell rings, a crow gets its wings. Why is all the makeup coming off now, when it's been through rainstorms and all kinds of other sh prior to this without fading? I am gonna miss you. And then Top Dollar stabs the crow. The end. Well, we tried to root for good to overcome evil in this thing, and it didn't work out. Wait, why is Eric still alive? 30 hours of pain, all at once! How does he have the power to transfer Shelly's pain to Top Dollar? I mean, yeah, he touched Ernie Hudson, and he saw her suffering, but does that transfer to his hands so he can share it with the others? The f***ing f***. Wow, three terrible falling scenes. Now I know that hypothetical Lorenzo Lamas movie from 1988 is toast. Necronookie. Is her hand made out of metal? What the f*** was that noise when the ring hit? If the people we love are stolen from us. Skip. Sometimes, that is better. Nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. Jenny! Five long years he wore this watch, up his ass. Your job will be to tell the rest of them that death is coming for them. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Oh, man, don't do that. You nearly gave me a hard time. I'm feeling a woozy air. Warriors, come out to play. 
It's probably fake. I'm talking about ethics. In death, there are no accidents, no coincidences, no mishaps, and no escapes. I wish the rain would stop just once. Is it still raining? I hadn't noticed. Just in case we get killed, I wanted to tell you, you have the biggest I've ever seen on a man. I thought my jokes were bad.